To make it context-free grammar, we need to identify the variables and the production rules. In general, we can recycle the variables, even locally, and have rules like s produces s plus s, unless there is a difference in the subsequent behavior of the terms. It's helpful to think of each variable as having some specific properties. s, for example, can be viewed as a variable that contains a string in the language. So if a string can be broken into substrings, each substring that could be in the language can be assigned the variable s. The analogy in a natural language is that sometimes a complete sentence can be broken into complete sentences. For example, you study for the exam and you should eat a good breakfast. Both you study for the exam and you should eat a good breakfast are themselves complete sentences. But sometimes a sentence can be broken into subordinate clauses that are not complete sentences. You should study for the exam by reading the book and doing all the assigned problems. You should study for the exam is still a complete sentence, but the rest of the sentence can't be broken into anything that forms a complete sentence. So in the natural language, if a clause by itself is a complete sentence, we can assign it the variable s, but if it isn't, we should introduce a new variable for it. So let's try to find a context-free grammar for the language consisting of strings with more zeros than ones. So again, the most elementary string of the language is zero, so we need a rule s produces zero. Now, suppose we have a string in the language. Then it has more zeros than ones, so we can produce another element of the language by prepending or appending a zero. And this suggests the rules s produces zero followed by a string, or a string followed by a zero. However, this rule doesn't allow us to introduce any ones. So if s has more zeros than ones, we could introduce a one as long as we also introduce another zero. So we could create another element of l if we concatenate with a zero and a 1. If we list all the ways we can do this, we get the production rules. We could also concatenate with more than one zero. But if we concatenate with more than one zero, that's really the same as repeatedly concatenating with a zero. So we don't really need a rule like s produces 0,0s. Zero, zero, but note that we wouldn't be wrong if we included it. It's just redundant. What about rules for concatenating multiple zeros and ones? It seems like we don't need it, so let's see if this set of rules works. So our grammar should accept 0,1,1,0,0,0 zero, one, one, zero, 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 and reject 0,1,1,1. Zero, one, one, one. So we can initialize our string, which is 0 followed by a string. And this is a 1 and a 0 prepended and appended to a string. And this is a 1 and a 0 prepended and appended to a string. And then finally our string is 0, and so we can produce 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And so it's in our language. Meanwhile, 0, 1, 1, 1 is 0 followed by a string, but we don't have any production rule that could handle 1, 1, 1, so this string is not in our language. Or is it? Now, there are two ways we could have proceeded with this string. First, we could, and initially did, use the rule s produces 0 followed by a string. But we also have the rule s produces 0, 1 followed by a string. So what if we use that instead? We'd get, and again, we have no way of proceeding. But wait, there's more. We also have the rule s produces 0, s, 1, which would give us And that 
doesn't help us. And we don't have any more rules we could apply, so we definitely can't produce this string. But it should be clear there's a potential problem. If our grammar rules produce a string, then we know that the string is part of the language. But to show that a string is not part of the language, we have to show that no possible application of the production rules can produce the string. This is a complicated problem, so we'll deal with it later. Before then, we'll address another problem. Remember, if you omit something and don't notice it, someone else will. So we've put down a bunch of production rules, but will this actually produce all strings in the language? Let's see if we can find a string that is in our language but cannot be produced by the rules we've put down. So notice that our rules allow us to prepend or append a zero and prepend or append a zero one pair. But is it possible to produce a string in our language in another way? Now, we've already concluded that prepending or appending multiple zeros is the same as using the rule repeatedly. Could we prepend or append multiple ones? Unfortunately, yes. If our string has enough zeros, then we can prepend ones without having to prepend zeros. Now, in this particular case, we can still use the rule s produces 1s0, but are there cases where we couldn't? And without too much effort, we can come up with an example. I could take the string of four zeros and prepend and append a 1. Does this mean we want the rule s produces 1s1? No. Remember, variables have no memory. All we know about s is that it should be a valid string in the language. So we know it has more zeros than ones, but prepending and appending one might produce a string not in the language. So we can't include this rule. So what else can we do? We'll take a look at that next.